Today, this INI CET 2024 exam got over, and me, Dr. Prasun Mishra, I am here with this ENT recall questions. Almost 10 to 14 questions have been asked from ENT. I always tell all my students that ENT is a very easy subject to study and if you score accurately in all these 10 to 14 questions, the very high chance that your merit will go high. So let us start the questions that have been asked from ENT. So uh, let us begin with the questions. The first question which was, which of the following is not seen in allergic rhinitis? A very straightforward question, however little bit confusing because we all understand allergic shiners and allergic salute are very very common. Uh, there might be confusion between Dennis Morgan folds and Otto Vergoth folds. Understand, Dennis Morgan folds, these are the, uh, Dennis Morgan folds is the uh, black line which is just present below the eyelid. This is the allergic shiners and this is the allergic salute. However, the Otto Verguta fold is seen in case of uh, depression. It is a fold seen on the forehead. So the answer for this was Otto Verguta fold is not seen in case of allergic rhinitis. Question 2 was sudden left sided lower motor neuron facial palsy. What is the first line of treatment? So obviously the, uh, I don't have all the four options which were given. However, if it is a sudden lower motor neuron facial palsy we understand most likely would be a Bell's palsy and the treatment that we start initially is a high dose of oral steroids and added with acyclovir. So the, this second is the right option. Uh, if any one of you have all the four options please message in the comment box. Third question was during the surgery of papillary carcinoma thyroid patient develop hoarseness of voice. Now the question is not sure whether the question was what step in surgery is responsible or how to prevent this. So the options which were given is while uh, dissecting strap muscles in the Bayer's triangle, Zucker candle tubercle or superior thyroid vessel. So obviously we understand that recurrent laryngeal nerve of this patient has been damaged and Bayer's triangle which is bounded by the carotid, the inferior thyroid artery and the recurrent laryngeal nerve itself is a landmark and a chance that if this triangle is not identified there is a chance that um, the recurrent laryngeal nerve may get damaged. Yes, uh, in this question you also should be aware uh, in the same context you should be aware of various triangles in the uh, for the thyroid. Most important is Bayer's triangle, Loray's triangle and the Joel's triangle. Coming to next question, this was that a 8 year old child who has bilateral sensory neural hearing loss, what should not be done? Understand the options given were adenoidectomy with grommet, cochlear implant, hearing aid, make child sit in the first row or preferential sitting. Obviously, cochlear, it's an essential case, cochlear implant or hearing aid has to be given. A child should be made seated in a preferential manner in the classroom. Adenoidectomy and grommet is not the treatment for SNHL. In fact, it is the treatment for otitis, yes, otitis media with effusion, in which case we can go for adenoidectomy and grommet insertion. So it's, it is for conductive hearing loss and not for sensory neural hearing loss. Next question was, a uh, patient underwent parotidectomy and then had drooping of the angle of mouth. Now the options are a little bit confusing. The options given were main trunk, auriculotemporal branch, cervical branch and parotid duct. Obviously it's a neural uh, division so parotid duct is out. So, um, uh, the auriculotemporal branch, uh, the sorry it's not bone, it's the branch. So the auriculotemporal branch is again out. Uh, now remains the main trunk. If it is main trunk, it, it will be deviation of the angle. Um, not sure drooping would be the right answer for that. However, in this case scenario, the best answer would be cervical branch of the facial nerve which gets damaged and can lead to drooping. If the option was uh, marginal mandibular or the mandibular branch, it would have been more, uh, more clear. However, from these four options, I will go with cervical branch of the facial nerve. So these are the five branches and the cervical or the marginal man cervical branch ultimately goes to platysma. However, marginal mandibular branch would be ideal but in this case scenario cervical branch. Next question was a 13 year old boy who has recurrent epistaxis for 8 months. Come on friends. Adolescent boy with epistaxis, close your eyes and write JNA. JNA is the right answer for this. Others definitely are not AC polyp will not give um, epistaxis, allergic rhinitis does not give epistaxis, 
coagulation disorder can give but for a 13 year old boy the answer should be juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma another question is which sign is not seen in ome this diagram was not given the answers were uh, is it mostly bilateral yes effusion is mostly bilateral then uh, ad curve is seen in demonometry no friends it is b type curve it is the flat curve which is seen it is the b type or the flat curve which is seen in temperometry it resolves in mon uh, on its own mostly yes and presents with common cold so this is common others are com uh, are the features of ome however ad type of curve is not there we all need to understand ad as curves in temperometry as seen in otosclerosis ad in ossicular discontinuity and a b type curve in otitis media with diffusion and there can be a c type curve seen in eustachian tube problems another question was a 40 year old obese male with daytime somnolence remember nowadays um, sleep disordered breathing or um, osa is a important topic in ent it's a important subspecialty obstructive sleep apnea is one of the most important topic in recent advances so the question was from that it is a 40 year old obese male with daytime sleep somnolence and disturbed sleep which is uh, not true or all are true except so obviously patient goes into apnea whenever there is apnea there is co2 retention patient will have hypercapnia as well then uh, it is apnea with fall in saturation also happens and in patient keeps waking up in between during the snoring episodes or apneic episodes so the answer was pharyngeal muscle contraction increases no it is the relaxation of the pharyngeal muscle which leads to narrowing of the of the uh, airway passage and that leads to snoring so contraction of pharyngeal muscle is the wrong answer another question was again very important from the uh, mcq makers structures passing between superior and the middle constrictor friends uh, just remember this uh, from the skull base and superior constrictor some structures pass between the superior and the middle constrictor structures some structures pass and between the middle and the inferior it is important that you remember this it's a it is a recall question we all need to remember this uh, between the middle and the inferior between the superior and the middle constrictor it is the styloglossus muscle and the ninth nerve which passes so styloglossus and ninth nerve was the was the right answer i don't have all the four options but the structures passing between these two will be ninth nerve and the styloglossus muscle this list gives the exhaustive part what all passes you all need to remember in further lectures we can discuss what all things and how easily we should remember this what is this view so with the with the focus on the frontal sinus it has to be a occipito frontal view also called as cardwell's view if the focus is on the maxillary sinus it will be occipito mental view it is not town's view it is not other view it is the occipito frontal view which was given uh, then this x-ray of the esophagus was given and the options were ecclesia ca esophagus obviously it's confusing whether it is uh, carcinoma or ecclesia understand the trick here is if the narrowing is in the lower part of the esophagus that is at the lower sphincter and the entire esophagus is dilated it has to be ecclesia in malignancy you will find more or less the it will be a irregular kind of esophagus and you will find that the dilatation or narrowing or the uh, upper core appearance would be in any or middle part most commonly but it will be irregular but if you see a narrowing with entire esophagus dilated it has to be ecclesia cardia then there was this interesting question can be either pathology surgery ent whichever but i will like to under, make all of us understand this there a girl with 6 month history of swelling in which moves the deglutition we understand it's a uh, thyroid mass they are talking about and in pathology you got this whenever you see pathology slides definitely we do get confused what to write so remember in malignancy there is medullary papillary follicular these three are the most common kind of malignancy which we need to identify this diagram shows if you see a thyroid slide with multiple pink with multiple pink large uh, large swellings or large uh, shaded areas it has to be medullary carcinoma thyroid now this photo gives papillary we, if you see lot of large blue dot 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 structure has to be orphan any eyed papillary if you see dilated pink structures has to be medullary if you see large circle 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 it has to be follicular so this is how we identify papillary 
the medullary and the follicular and when it is vague and dispersed and the and the hint question shows towards thyroid it has to be anaplastic but remember papillary and medullary are favorites among the examiner to be asked large dilated pink structures papillary medullary and dot large dot blue structures has to be papillary carcinoma in this case the answer was medullary carcinoma thyroid uh, some students also mentioned there was a question on otoscopy image details were not there uh, but one of the option was tuberculosis if it is tuberculosis uh, you will definitely find multiple perforations if i get the correct answer a correct question we'll try to post it again if any of you have the question please post in the comment section so friends that was all about it we had it was all we had almost 10 to 14 uh, 13 to 14 questions which have been asked and remember these all were extremely easy questions and if you answered them correctly very high chance your merit will go high I hope this uh, small video would help all of us to understand these questions and more updates coming up soon. Thank you. Good day. All the best to all of you.